Hi everyone, welcome to Pop Balls Workshop. Well, today's project is back doing some remodeling. I've got to tear out my old fiberglass shower and replace it. And the biggest problem when you're doing the remodeling is the mess that it creates. So today I wanna to show you how to tear out the old shower with the least amount of mess possible. And this project took about an hour, hour and a half from beginning to end. So let me show you how I do it. So let's get started. Before doing any work at all, this is what the shower looks like. It's a standard, typical three foot by four foot fiberglass shower with the glass doors. The biggest problem that we have is this step. This is about an eight inch step, and that's very, very high. The first step, I'm just going to release the suction cup grab bar and get that out of the way. The first step in removing the shower glass doors is removing the screws at the top. There are several different screws to be able to be removed and you want this glass out of the way to begin with so you don't have any danger of having an accident. With the screws removed, all you need to do is raise up on that top horizontal bar. Now in some cases you'll have to cut the silicone but in this case, it just lifted right up and that releases the door and the door comes out. So it's time to get that out of the way. Now there was one more screw that I needed to release. And then from there, I'm able to lift off the top bar and remove it completely. Now the glass panel itself still remains held in on the wall itself. I want to remove both of the vertical bars and to be able to do that I've got to cut the silicone rubber all the way down on both sides. Now once I cut the silicone all the way down you will find that there will be several screws that will be in, screwed in to the metal into the fiberglass and they usually have just a little plastic anchor so those are actually fairly easy to remove. You want to be able to cut the silicone rubber all the way through and it usually takes several different times to be able to get it cut all the way through and then you can start pulling the glass so you want to be able to pull the glass straight out you do not want to pull this at an angle if you pull it straight out it should be able to release from the seal itself and sometimes the metal will come out at the same time sometimes not and you can see in this particular situation, the metal came out at the same time. And if you look closely in the video, you can see the little plastic anchors still attached to the metal. So the anchors came out as I pulled this loose. Now that I have the glass out, I'll get this outside as well and get it out of my way. The next thing I did is just pop the cover off of the drain. There's a brass ring that needs to be unscrewed. Now I missed this on the camera. My camera battery actually died and I wasn't aware of it. So moving right along, went ahead and removed the shower head and the hose and get that out of the way too. And at this time I go ahead and remove the control valve cover. I want to be able to take off the screws off the cover itself and I want to take the, screw, the plastic knob off and get that out of the way as well. And the water's still on, so I don't want that twisting. That makes a big mess. But I caught that in time, so just a few drops of water. I'm taking a level now, and I'm using this just more as a spacer. And I'm marking a sheetrock to be able to give me a cut line. I need to do that around the entire perimeter of the shower. And the reason this is important is I need to expose the nail fin that actually has the fiberglass shower nailed to the studs. Now usually this is where the big mess begins. But one of the things that I'm doing is using a shop vac with this oscillating tool to be able to cut the sheetrock and having a hose right up by the blade, I'm catching about 99% of all the dust. 
So I would have to say that literally I'm working in virtually a dust-free environment. And when you're cutting the sheetrock and being able to do it this way, that is fantastic. That's what you want to be able to do is set up the shop back for this. Now cutting along this top edge, the shower head itself was in the way. Now if I was really thinking, I would have just unscrewed the shower head and be able to continue on. But not doing that, what I did is just skipped over the space where I couldn't do it and I continued cutting to be able to cut out that part that I couldn't get the oscillator sander in. I just used a sheetrock knife and be able to cut that. Again, that was virtually no mess at all. So I'm happy to say that at this point, cutting all this sheetrock, I really have no sheetrock dust to speak of. And the most important thing is the wife's happy because again, there's no sheetrock dust. And that's one of the things that you have to really watch when you're doing the remodeling is all the dust from this. So I'll continue along the back wall and move this process all along, keeping that vacuum hose right near that blade. Now this process actually goes very quickly using this oscillating tool because it cuts the sheetrock easy and it directs the sawdust literally in one place and that is right into my hose. If I used anything else, it would probably be throwing the sheetrock dust all over. So keep that in mind if you're cutting the sheetrock, do it this way to minimize the mess. Okay, so here's the biggest mess of the whole entire project, breaking out the strip that we just cut. The good thing about it is the dust does not fly all over the room. It just falls straight to the ground and it's easy to be vacuumed up. You are going to run into nails or screws depending on how they attach the sheetrock. And you want to be able to cut this as clean as you can because you're going to have to replace this later on with additional sheetrock. Now I also had a trash bag real close by so as these pieces came out it went straight into the trash can. Now in my situation, I ran into both screws and nails. And the funny thing in this corner, I had three nails right there in a row. That was hard to believe, but they were there. And I also had to pull off the base. But you can see that this is now all removed and this is exposing the nail fin. And you can see the attachment there where it's nailed in and you can see other nails going around this shower and that was the important thing is to expose this nail fin and all of the nails that are actually holding in the shower so now that this is all exposed i can remove those nails i got to admit that these nails are a little bit unusual i didn't expect to see this type of nail holding in the shower now off camera I removed those nails and the interesting thing about the fiberglass it actually will break fairly easy so I'm just pulling this out and you can see where it breaks right in half and I'm not too worried about having to get it out in one great big piece. Breaking it like this also eliminates all the sawdust if I was cutting it. Now as I was breaking off each hunk of the fiberglass I would take it outside and get it out of the bathroom and I did not want it inside the house at all. And for the most part, these pieces broke in a very manageable size that I was able to just break off and carry outside. Now one thing that I want to point out, it is very important to use the, the leather gloves because that fiberglass edge is very sharp and that fiberglass will get into your hands. Now once I got the whole shower removed, you can see some problems. This water lines was not even inside the wall. So that's going to have to be addressed with the plumber. But you can see that this is a very clean line all the way around. The other thing you can see is how this 2 before was completely twisted and it's going to be fixed as well. And this wire it's got to get back inside of the stud. 
Now I wanted to show you with the shower completely removed what it looked like. The only dust that I had was a little bit of dust in the immediate area. There was no dust that went into the bedroom at all. And so now I have this completely cleaned and ready to move on to the next step. So this is going to end part one. Hi everyone. Thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.